Hi Copic in the Craft Room fans, Michelle Houghton here. I am back with the, a second face from Inky Antics. We did the one that is on the left of the paper a couple weeks ago and now we're going to do the one to the right with the braid. I love these quirky little faces. I just am just immediately struck when I found them online and felt like these would be so fun to color up and add dimension to. So, and use my Copics on. So, I am lucking out once again that these are smaller and faster and so we can keep this one more week at real time. I can give you a little forewarning, next week is not. Um, it's a lot, a larger image that has a lot more detail going on. I'm gonna base the skin today in E31 and so I'm filling in that full area, getting that smooth base to work on top of. You can tell by the base color that this skin tone is gonna to get considerably darker than the last one. And that, um, for me, again, sometimes I do like working dark from light, but especially sometimes with darker skin tones, I have an easier time going light to dark just because it gives me that even coverage to start and um, helps that blending because I've got that wet layer um, underneath my other inks as I'm adding them. My E33 is next. Now I'm gonna work from the outer edges of the faces inward. So I'm coming up underneath her eye, and I'm going underneath the cheekbone. So notice it's kind of more at her jaw level and coming out toward her mouth. I am gonna add a nose again down the center, adding that shading to one side. The darker color also comes over the very kind of top edge of her eye and then right underneath the brow also comes out from underneath the hair, and then it's gonna duplicate those same areas on the second side, under the eye, over the eye, under the brow, coming down along the cheek, and underneath the cheekbone, pointing in towards her mouth, coming down the edge of her neck, and kind of across her shoulders, giving shape to her face. E04 is next and I'm coming in to those darkest areas. So right underneath the eye and by the corner of the eye comes out slightly under the cheekbone but not as far and underneath the brow. You'll notice the E04 just does not come out as far. What I like about adding this color for my darkest on kind of some darker skin tones is it also adds that rosy hint. And so I don't necessarily need to add a blush color Hitting the inner edge of that nose and eye. That's a corner that gets really dark on our faces. Kind of check that out on people's faces as you look at them. Going back to blend with my E33, smoothing out the edge of that E04. Being careful of the whites of her eyes. These stamps do not close off those eyes and so I've gotta avoid getting into the whites of her eyes. And coming back with my E31 to soften the edges of the E33. Now, depending on how quickly or slowly you work, you might have to bring that E31 all the way across the face again. It's gonna darken the whole area, but if the ink is dry in those lightest areas and you bring that E31 up to a dry area of E31, you can end up with a watermark where the kind of wet ink hits the dry. If you work fairly quickly with just these three layers, you may not need to go all the way across those colors. 
but for a lot of us, especially if you're newer to Copic coloring, you might have to go all the way across the face. It is gonna take it one tone darker because you've added more ink, but it's gonna smooth that color out and not leave those watermarks. Now what I realized, I am gonna add a blue violet to some of these little tiny area. So I'm going to come into the outer corner of the eye and right at the edge of her cheek. I'm going to come underneath that heavy bang, kind of over here to the right side, leaving a cast shadow. That won't get blended in at all. I want that to be, have a little bit more of that crisp edge. Underneath the chin. right at the corners of those eyes again and inside the ear on that left hand side. And you can see I'm darkening up that left side of her face. I have kind of made some decisions as I've gone where I've got the light on the nose, where I've added the cast shadow on the hair. We're going to darken that left side just a hint with that BB. Now fair warning here. I was not able to do this entire thing at real time. The hair is going to be a little faster and I apologize for that. I realized after I had kind of promised that, that it was just not going to work. The video was going to be just a hair too long. Um, some of that has to do with uploading to YouTube. Some of that has to do with um, just my own capabilities and what I think you guys are willing to sit through. So hang on. I'm just going to speed up just a hair for the hair, just a hair for the hair. Sorry. E43 to start. I am flicking from the part out and from the base of that braid up. You can get more solid behind her neck because I know that area is going to get darker. I treat each piece of the braid kind of separately, again, going from each corner in the opposite direction. So top corner down, bottom corner up, switching over to E44. Same areas, less amounts. The area you're gonna see the most go in is right behind the neck, the hair that's falling behind her. because I do want that to get considerably darker. I'm adding E15 in the mix this time, and that is to give a hint of red. Um, it has a wonderful kind of brick red tone, so having some of that undertone in the hair to give those kind of auburn highlights, I think it's a great color, especially in a darker brunette to do that. E47 is next. Now as I get into these last um, colors, you're just, I'm hitting the exact same spots, just fewer flicks. So they still go the same length, they still are uneven, so some short, some long, but I am using fewer flicks as I get into these darker ones. And I'm way up on the tip of my marker, that's why it's hard to see what I'm doing kind of right underneath, and I apologize for that. I'm going to use a little E49. Again, this is what, 
when I get into something as dark as E49, I do shorten my flicks as well. So these are, I'm being very precise about where I place these. I'm kind of creating, reinforcing the sections that the artist has shown with this, going into that hair behind her, behind her neck to really darken that. But by going into some of those little corners and flicking out, that is going to add that, um, kind of add those sections back in so you can see the ins and outs of her hair and you can really see that braid now by going into that bottom corner with that E49. I don't want to take the texture out completely so I've jumped all the way back to my E43 that starting color and I'm doing kind of a broad flick so I'm pressing a little bit harder with my brush nib and I'm very loosely, I give every area kind of one pass. Notice I'm going from the dark area in toward the light. I literally do one time, kind of let it sit for a second, and then I go over it one more time if I need to, but I'm trying not to eliminate the texture. I'm slowing back down so you can kind of see the final stages of this. E44, I'm adding a little bit more into that darker area. I felt like I still had some funny highlights back there that I didn't want showing, and I really want to push that behind her neck and head. And I feel like that really accomplishes that. One of the things I'm not showing in this video, but remember that most of our hands flick in one direction and not in every direction well. So make sure you're turning your image as much as you need to. I try to keep mine as upright as possible, but most of the time, think about spinning her as much as you need to to get those flicks going the direction your hand works best. So here's my second face all finished up. Thank you so much for stopping by again today. If you haven't had a chance recently, stop by at my blog at scrapweaver.com to see all of my live class teachings and offerings. Thank you so much for joining me today. Make sure to add questions if you have any and have a happy, colorful day.